came by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And you might be going through something where you're not feeling up to par physically, or your finances need to be healed, or your family relations need to be healed, and everything around you looks bleak and dark, all the signs are not there, the symptoms are still there, the problem is still there, whether it's financially, physically, emotionally, but you need to defy the odds and stand on your faith and say, yes, I'm healed. Yes, I'm healed by the word of God. Am healed by the word of God. I am healed by the word of God. Yes, it's already done. Just waiting for my change to come, but I know I'm healed by the word. <coughs> Yes, I'm healed by the word of God. I am healed by the word of God. No better man. I am healed. I am healed by the word of God. Yes, it's already done. Yes, it's already done. Yes, says that death and life are in the power of our tongue. Speak life, speak health, speak healing over yourself. In Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord, everybody. I want to thank you guys for tuning in this afternoon. Um, I thank and praise God for you. Um, I want to open up with a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We give you praise. There's none like you, none like you on the earth and the heavens. We bless your name today. We thank you today. We magnify you today. We glorify you today. We exalt you today. We honor your name today. We thank you today. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. You didn't wake up this morning in the hospital. Yes, you have a lot to rejoice about. Although we have been in a pandemic, hallelujah, hallelujah. The death angel has not called your yes, number. Yes, he has not called your name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We magnify your name. We give your name all the praise and all the glory. Yes, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for there's none like you, none, none like you in the earth, in the heavens and beneath the earth. So Father, today we say arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Father, we ask you right now that you would have your way today. We pray that you move on the behalf of our service today. Father, we pray that you would touch the speaker this afternoon. We pray that you would anoint him afresh, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you would anoint the worship leader this afternoon. We pray that you would anoint her afresh, oh God. Oh Lord, we pray that you anoint the woman of God who's reading the scripture, oh God. We pray that you would anoint her afresh, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare and we decree that we are healed and we thank you right now. We love you right now. We honor your name right now. We exalt your name. Father, we thank you right now. So, Father, we lift up Regina Banks this afternoon. We pray for healing over her body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for the pastor. I can't remember her name, God, but the woman of God who we were supposed to pray for on yesterday. We pray for healing over her body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you right now, oh God. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray right now that you would move like never before today in the name of Jesus. And we thank you right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus name, in Jesus name, we pray. Amen. 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 At this time, I want to um, bring Tanya Quinson Hinton up to read our scripture. Um, this afternoon, she's going to read our scripture and our announcements. Um, Tanya Hinton Quinton, just press start. Amen. Good afternoon, Huddle family. I will let you know what today's scripture is. I will be reading from Psalm 105, verses 1 through 5. Psalm 105, verses 1 through 5. Here are the announcements. Pastor Eric says, good afternoon and welcome to the huddle, a place of healing. Today, we welcome Elder Richard Payton. Tune in this Tuesday night for the Christina Nelson Show. Tuesday's guest is Shauna Marie. The topic, miracles, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join Christina's page to watch the show. Join us this Friday, November 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Friday Night Live. We will be having movie night and the information will be on the flyer. Join us next Sunday, November 29th Minister Christina Nelson 
will be ministering the Word of God. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Huddle, A Place of Healing. Saturday, December 19th, we are having our first Christmas gathering. Christmas poetry, Christmas psalmist, DJ Ray Nelly, ugly sweater contest, door prizes, and more. You don't want to miss it. Live on Facebook, live in the huddle. Facebook Live in the Huddle. If you would like to participate in our ugly Christmas sweater contest, please inbox Pastor Eric or Lady Christina. This concludes our announcements. Have a fantastic week. I'm pulling up the scripture. Psalm 105, verses 1 through 5. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Thanks be to God for his beautiful work. Amen, amen, and praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. He is good, and his mercy endures forever. Everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. We praise God today. I hope you guys are ready to give God some praise and some worship. When you give praise, you um, are announcing your victory Hallelujah. You are telling God how good he is to you. You are telling God that he is great. And you already know that today you have the victory. So when we sing praises, we sing out loud and we say, open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts because we want to see you. And that means give us an understanding. Open the eyes of our hearts so we will know you better. Hallelujah. Come on. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. 
Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why should we wait? King of love. This place, I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Oh, King of Glory, feel this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Come on, say yes, the world. Yes, the world will bow down, will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why should we wait? We can praise him now. In victory, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you in your presence. Sing King of, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you, oh, I just want to be with you, sing King of Glory, King of Glory, fill this place, I just want to be with you, oh yes Lord, I just want to be with you, yeah, 
King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to be with you. Oh, so we'll sing hallelujah till you come again. Hallelujah, God. And we'll dance in your presence till you come again. Hey, and we'll sing hallelujah till you come again. And we'll dance in your presence till you come again. Oh, and we'll sing hallelujah till you come again lord yes we will and we'll dance in your presence dance in your presence dance in your presence dance in your presence oh dance in your presence dance in your presence dance in your presence dance in your presence king of glory Fill this place. I just want to be with you. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just want to be with you. Oh, King of glory. Fill this place. I just want to be with you. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Just want to be with you. Come on, sing hallelujah today. And we'll sing hallelujah till you come again. Oh, and we'll dance in your presence till you come again. We will sing. We will sing hallelujah till you come again. And we will dance, we will dance in your presence, dance in your presence, dance in your presence, dance in your presence. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, oh, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Oh, King of glory, fill this place. King of power. Won't you fill this place? King of my joy, come on and fill this place. King of my peace, fill this place. King of healing, won't you fill this place? Oh. King of healing, won't you fill this place? Oh, King of my joy, King of my peace, King of my joy, King of my joy, and we'll dance in his presence, dance in his presence, Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, dance in his presence, dance in his presence, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, king of glory, fill this place, I just want to be with you, I just want to be with you, one more time sing. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. 
Hallelujah. Why don't you sing hallelujah right now where you are? Why don't you shout the victory right now where you are? God is in this place, in the place of healing right now. And the next voice you want to hear will be our very own elder, Richard Payton. Hallelujah. He's just going to come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. Amen, 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 amen. We thank and praise the Lord for this day. We thank and praise God for allowing us to come together. We are gathered together, huddled up here in this place of worship, in this place where the presence of the Lord is, and we welcome the Spirit of God. We welcome the Spirit of the living God. We welcome the King of kings, and we welcome the Lord of lords in this place. We welcome the one that causes us to rise up to see a wonderful day, the one that has spoken breathe into our heart, our mind, our spirit, the breath of life. That's who we welcome in today. This is the day that the Lord has made. And what? Let's rejoice in this day. My friend, my friend, my brother, my sister, let's come together, huddle up together and give God glory, give God honor and give God praise because he is worthy of all the praises. Yep, that's God who delivered you. That's one, the one who set you free. Yep, the one that gave you joy. Yep the one that has given you the peace right now. Yep, the one that is encouraging your heart and mind and spirit. Give him the glory, give him the honor, give him the praise. Magnify the Lord right now where you're sitting, whether you're driving, whether you're just walking, magnify the Lord because as we're looking out, as you're walking, if you're out and about, Seeing the creation of God, he did it. Yep, the trees, the sun, the moon, sometimes if you're at night, the moon that we might see, the beautiful creation of creation of nature, God did all of that. He did it, nobody else but God. There's no other manufacturer that created the heavens and earth but God. There's no other manufacturer who created the animals that we see, whether you're in the zoo, whether you see it out in the wild, God did it. No matter what the flowers you may see, the, the fragrance, the trees, the blowing of the wind that you may feel upon your skin, God did that. No matter if you've seen a, an African, if you see a Jamaican, if you see an Asian, Chinese, Puerto Rican, Jamaican, or if you see a person from Sweden or a person from Australia, they look different from you. Yep, but God did it because he allowed them to move upon this earth. It's in him. God, that we live, we move, and we have our being. That's why we come together, huddle up get to give God glory, to give God honor. He is worthy and worth all of our praises. And we want to thank and praise God for allowing us to be here on the huddle this morning. You are a part of this service. By you just coming, by you bringing the God that, that's inside of you, the God that created the heavens and the earth, by you coming together, I'll bring in the peace of God. By you coming and bringing the love of God and the joy of the Lord, you're adding to this service. You're adding value. As you allow your worship, as you allow your praise to flow upon this line, you're adding value because you're plugging in, allowing the love of God, allowing the peace of God, allowing the joy of God flow from your heart, from your mind, from your spirit. As you allow the encouragement and the life of Christ flow from your heart, from where your place of residence and onto the line, touching lives that you might not see, you're adding value to this service because we are all a part of the body of Christ. Whether you're the brain, whether you're the foot, whether you're the heart, whether you're the lungs, whether you're the finger, maybe you're the baby toe, you're still adding value to the blood body of Christ because we're all one part of one family because we're all connected, connected together. Why? Because God is our father. He is the one that created us in his image, in his likeness. We belong to God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who snatched us out of sin, the one who drew us close to him. We belong to him. He's our father, our God, our Lord, and he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be lifted up. He is worthy to receive all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his wonderful goodness, for his mighty acts in the lives of men. We serve a great and mighty God. We serve an awesome God. Ha. There's no one like him. No one can do us like he does. Ah, I love him. I bless him. I praise him because he's wonderful. He's holy and he's mighty. 
He is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords. And we thank and praise God for being our Lord, our Savior. We thank God for his life. We thank God for his peace. We thank God for his joy. We thank God for his rest because he leads us beside still waters. He's the one that restores our soul. We thank God because he's our present help. No matter what you're going through, if it's a rainy day, if it's snow outside, if it's ice outside, whether the breeze might be want to knock you over, God is God and he's always with us. My Lord, my shepherd, who uh, I don't want nobody else but him. I love him. I bless him. I praise him because he is my peace. Blessings and glory and honor belongs to him. He's wonderful. He's worthy. He is my peace. He is my joy. Wonderful. He's worthy. Wonderful. He's mighty. Wonderful. He's strength. <laughs> Blessings to his name. We thank God, <laughs> slow down. We thank God because he's wonderful. We thank God he's worthy. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I'm trying to get to this five-year anniversary message. Um, want to acknowledge the messengers that came forth during that this five-year anniversary of the huddle. We had there were so many, many good messages that came forth. There was a messenger that came from Mark 11, 22, 24, talking about desire. <laughs> Where's your desire? Have a desire for God. And there was another message, messenger that came from Isaiah 26, 1 and 3, saying, stay focused. What has your focus? But stay focused. Let your focus be on God. And there was another message that came forth, and that said, they spoke from Mark 10, 46 to 42nd, 52nd verse. They said that, we have been called to leave a legacy. God left his hand print here in the earth that we, all creation can say that there is a God who did all of this. And also that the fact that he tabernacled in man, the fact that Christ Jesus came on this earth, he left a leg legacy wherein he, they produced out of his legacy, he produced more sons and daughters that belong to the living God. And there was another speaker that came forth from Psalms 107. Verses 20 and 21 says restoration. They spoke of restoration of how we can be stored back to our original, our original form, our original way of habitation, our original way of way that we're supposed to function here, this earth, even in this body. We, God, we is able to restore us. And they spoke about res restoration. And there was another speaker that came forth speaking from Ezekiel 37 about prophesy to your situation, prophesy to your life, prophesy to those things that seem like they're dormant in your life, prophesy, speak what God says. And there was another speaker that came forth speaking from Malachi, the fourth chapter and second verse talking about fearing the Lord, fearing God, having the fear of God in us, repenting to God of not respecting or honoring him or doing what he wants us to do, but fear God. God and create an atmosphere of worshiping God, create an atmosphere where we worship God in spirit and in truth. And with all that being said of what they have said, that there was a word that came forth. And as Psalms 107 talks about how God sent his word and healed them. Well, my friends, get Go back and review these messages because the word of God came forth from these messengers. Get Go back, revisit these messages because God spoke a word in the midst of the huddle. That God, those were words of life. They were words of strength. They were words of healing. They were words of deliverance. And also amongst the words that were spoken, healing took place. There was reports that people was talking about how God healed them of the dilemma. Many various situations was going through in the pot in the body bodies of many people that called on that lines the day that they heard these word, healing words, they received the word with joy. They received the word with gladness. They have a testimony of what God did for them. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. And this is coming from Psalms 107. One said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy and doeth forever. And in that same chapter said, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. 
saying all of that, I thank God. I praise God because we serve a God who is alive. We serve a God who is living. We serve a God that is strong. We serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we can even ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And what is that power? That power is the life of God that God's breathed into us. That power is the word of God that is alive within us. That power is the spirit of God that moves upon the face of the earth, upon the face of men, in the hearts and the minds of men and women today. God is an awesome God. He's a mighty God, and I give him glory. I give him praise because he's alive. He is alive. And you might wonder, so why do these people come together and to make a big, big, big commotions about God? I'm going to tell you why. We come to Together. We come to huddle together, whether you're in your home, whether you're by yourself, whether you're in a, another local assembly, it doesn't matter where you're at. But when you come to God, come together, and when you worship God for who he is, you acknowledge and say, you're saying, God, you're in charge. God, you're the one that, that has the power. When we do this in spirit and truth, God, in his unique way, he shows up. Giving thanks to God is a great thing. And my friend, when you give thanks to God, you're saying, God, I acknowledge you from a heart of gratitude. I appreciate all that you have done. So I want to say thank you. It's just like when someone comes up to you in a restaurant, the waiter comes up, they bring you your food. It's very polite to say thank you. And that waiter or waitress will say thank you as well. It's just like when you're walking down the street, you open the doors for someone and they turn in return. They say, thank you. You appreciate that. It's just like when somebody might see that you drop something that belongs to you and it's something of value. And they, hey, they say, ma'am, sir, you drop this and you look and see and you receive it with joy and glad because that item was something of value. In your heart, you're grateful. And you say great you, with gratitude and appreciation. You say thank you. And praise is like Hey, God, you did this. God, you turned things around. God, you opened up a door for me. What you're doing, you're giving honor. You're giving credit to the one who did it. And my friend, when we worship God for who he is, <laughs> when we give thanks of God, of attitude, of thanks of gratitude and appreciation to God, and when we give praise and honor to God because we're telling the report, we're just magnifying God. We're just pointing our finger to God. We're acknowledging God for who he is, what he can do, what he will do, and how much he cares for us. And bottom line is, what I'm trying to say and all of what I'm going to say, all I'm saying is, let's give thanks to God. Why? Because he's worthy of all of our thanks. He is worthy of all our praise. Now, thank and praise God from the scripture that Sister Tanya read. She read from Psalms 105. And it says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Let's pause. What did God do for you today? What did God do for you yesterday? What did God do for you last week? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And then it says, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Let's pause. What is his name? When you're giving God thanks, what are you thanking him for? Who of God are you thanking? Because God is an almighty God. The Bible talks about how he is El Shaddai, the many-breasted one. So my friend, are you thinking El Shaddai? Are you thinking El Elyon, the mighty God? Are you thinking Adonai, the Lord, the master, the creator of the earth? Or are you thinking <laughs> El Shad, um, Jireh, the Lord who will provide? Who, what phase of God are you thinking? What I'm getting at, God is so awesome that we can thank him because of the many ways that he are do, he's doing things and will do for him. Who is he? He is to you. Who is God to you? We can say, yes, he is my God, the creator of the heavens and earth. And yes, some can say, God, he is my savior. And yes, oh, then some might stop right there because they have not experienced him in their lives in certain areas. Well, I might not know God as a deliverer. I don't know what deliverance is or have I ever yielded my life to allow him to deliver me? I'm not too sure if he's a God of peace because I like to let my mind 
run to and fro within myself because I'm trying to figure things out for myself. But my friend, he is a God of peace. He is a God of peace that passes all understanding. He is, oh, let me lead my life the way I want to know. But Psalms 23 says, but the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There's no need for me to have somebody else to lead me and guide me in my life because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Wow. When my life is going at different types of turbid, different array, where there's no control in my life, I need somebody in my life to bring me to a place of rest. I need somebody to bring me a place of ease, a place of peace. And that's who God is to me. He is my peace. He is the one that leads me beside still water so I can be restored because there are times when, like going back to that speaker talking about restoration, sometimes when life seems to get us to the best of our ability, sometimes when my heart is overwhelmed, the psalm says, lead me to the rock. And my God, he is the rock that is higher than I because there has to be, there is a stronger person. There's a stronger element stronger than the ability of mankind, stronger than the ability that we have within ourselves. And my God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, he is my rock. He is my fortress. He is the foundation I can rest and stand upon, on, upon with confidence, with assurance, knowing that he's able to do exceedingly abundant above all that I can even ask or think regarding the situation that I'm going through. He has the final say so because he is the final judge. So God is the judge of my life. God is the rock of my life. God is the rest in my life. God is my peace. God passes all understanding. Yea, though I walk through the valleys and the shadows, I have no fear because he's ever present. He's, that's why I thank him because he's ever with me. He's able ever to lead me, to guide me, to instruct me. He is God. He is my life. Um, there's another one talk about Jehovah Shammah. <laughs> Jehovah Shammah. He is present. God is everywhere. God is everywhere because he's omnipresent. But is he present right now with you, right now where you're at? If you need peace right now, he's knocking at your door open up your heart by grace receive his peace he's knocking at your door if you need wisdom and understanding he's right there embrace wisdom saying as the psalm says wisdom you're my sister understanding you're my kinswoman that keep me from the woman that flatters with her lips that's the one wisdom and understanding is ever with us ever before us the lord shalom my peace the lord this is my favorite one I love him. He's my savior. I love him. He's my Lord. I love him. He's my God. But somehow I have fell in love with the Lord. Jehovah, Tiskanu, my righteousness. I love it because when I needed someone to cleanse my life, when I needed someone to wash me from my sins, the Lord Christ Jesus, my righteousness has taken part, has taken display, has taken action, has taken authority in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit. So that's why I love him because I can always run to him, Christ Jesus, my high priest, the one who intercedes for me. That's why I give thanks. I'm calling upon his name. He's holy. He's wonderful. He's mighty. He's El Shaddai. He is my banner. Jehovah Nissi, my banner. He watches over me. His banner over me is love. And he's a loving God because he is love. He's a loving God because he is truth. Uh, my Lord, my shepherd. So many wonderful names that he is. And these are the Old Testament names of who he is. And my friend, my sister, my brothers, who is he to you? Activate his names in your life. Activate him. Get past, oh, he's God the creator. Get past, he's my savior. Get past those beginnings, those moments, and walk into the fullness of who he is. And he is God almighty. And the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell in it. So allow the Lord, the king of kings, the Lord of glory to flow into your life and flow into the different areas of your life. Allow him to be the counselor in your home. Allow him to be the counselor on your job. Allow, allow him to be the provider for wisdom and for understanding him. Allow him to be what he wants to be in your life. Allow him, and as you allow him to do these things, thank him for who he is to you 
presently. Thank him for who he is becoming even the more because as God blesses us with each and new day, we can learn more about him. As he's transforming us, one of the favorite scriptures that Pastor Eric speaks is from Romans 12, 1 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And as we grow up in Christ, we're able to experience newness of who he is. Just like your son, if you have, if you're a parent, if you have children, you have the, your, your, your baby in the baby stage and they're this from age one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. And each age range, each age bracket, as they grow, they experience a certain development. They, their mind is able to understand or comprehend certain things according to their age and according to their development. And so as we as sons and daughters of Christ, as we grow up in him, allowing him to be God in our lives, we can experience different phases or different aspects of who he is. If we're growing and we're, st we're stagnated in a certain a part in our walk with Christ or in our relationship, that's who he's going to be because our growth are going to our development because he cannot be God almighty and all awesome if we're still growing, if we're still in the infant stage, if we're not allowing our mind to comprehend who he is. Yes, he wants to. Yes, he's God. But as his word says, a little here, a little there, line upon line, precept upon precept, God develops us. He grows us up according to our ability to handle him because if the fullness of God was inside of us right now, if the fullness of light was inside of us right now, we would, we would explode. We could not contain it. But God wants, just like Christ, when he was here on the earth, yes, he was born in the Virgin Mary. He came out of Mary. Yes, but as a young child, he was before the, the, scribes, the scribes and the elders going through the scriptures, asking questions of the scriptures. He didn't come save her all at once when he came out of his mama's womb. No, he grew. He grew in wisdom and in strength. He grew in wisdom and in strength. There was a process of his growth. There was a process of his development. And even with us, there's a process as we grow in the things of God. There's a process of learning of who God is. And there's a process of learning how do we fit in the kingdom of God. There's a the process. There's a development. But along the way, we can always give God things. We can always acknowledge him. We can always give the credit to him. We can always give the props to him. We can always tell our report that God is God. And beside him, there is no other. We can always say God is. And my friend, you know what that God is to you. Everybody's God is a little bit different. It might be some similarities, yes. The results is by his word and by his spirit, yes. But God is God to you. And you, my friend, have your personal testimony. And that's what I love about God because God is able to put us in so many different forms of the human race. But God can always get praises out of the different persons that we are. Our DNA is totally different from each other, but what a unique, what an amazing thing to hear praises coming out of things that look different from another. It's just like a flower. You might smell the tulip. You might smell the roses. You might smell the, the daisies. You might smell the other various types of flowers. I don't know them all, but all of them have a unique smell. All of them have unique colors. All of them have unique shapes, but they're called flowers with a different smell. And my friend, as we connect with God, being who God has made us in our own unique way and give God glory and honor and praise from the heart of gratitude with a heart of thankfulness, God smells and God is delighted in what he is smelling and what he is experiencing. And I think uh, another scripture, oh my God. <laughs> Psalms 69, 30 says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. We can sing songs, we can quote scriptures, but if this not done with a spirit and a heart of thanksgiving, it's not going anywhere. And so in all that we do in our singing and all that we do in our praying and all that we do in our praising and worshiping, let it be from a thankful heart. This is a song that said, give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. There's no tune to that song, Richard. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. 
give thanks because he's given. That's it. CD, you want it? Hold it. Well, anyway, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks out of heart of joy and delight. God enjoys that. God delights when we are thanking him, grateful to him. God delights and he says, oh, this is my son. This is my daughter. Give me a song of praise, delight in themselves because they love me, because they want to be with me. And when we can do this, God is glorified. We're magnifying God. And, and many times when things are going our way, we say, hey, my God, hey, man, I got this new car. I, I got this new house. I, I got this new job. I got these new shoes. We're so happy. We're delighted and we're thankful. And everybody's all excited just because we're excited. But what about when we have news that don't sound so appealing? to our ears or even to the, appealing to the other people's or our audience ears. Can we give God thanks with a grateful heart when my house got burned down or I lost my job or the cow jumped over the moon? <laughs> Stop, Richard. Um, but can we give God thanks when there are moments and times where they're not happy, they're not delightful? In this season that we're living in, the whole world knows what's happening, but can't we still give God thanks? Can we say Jesus is still Lord, that God still reigns in the heavens and the earth? Can we still say he is the author and the finisher of my faith? Can we still say, despite of what the news is saying, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory? Can we still do these, do this, say these things with thankfulness, with joy in our heart? This is the testing time when we can Thank God while we're going through what we're going through, that is a sacrifice of worship. That's a sacrifice of praise because your emotions are not involved. Many times we get emotional when we're happy, when we're joyful, or we're giving thanks because our emotions are on point. Our emotions are feeling happy and joyful. Our emotions are in harmony with our thinking. Our emotions are in harmony with our heart. But when our heart, oh my God, when my heart is overwhelmed, when my emotions is over here on the left side and my brain is on the right side and none of these things are connecting, when my heart is overwhelmed, can I go to the rock that is higher than I? This is the sacrifice when we can thank God, when we can worship God, when we can praise God, when we can bring ourselves together on one accord. Even the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? So when we can bring our heart, our mind, and our spirit within agreement with one another, say we're going to worship God no matter what we see, no matter what we feel, no matter what we think, I believe. I am confident that God will show up. Oh, you said prove it? Okay, I have proof. I have three brothers. They, they, they reside in the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, in the third chapter, look it up when you have time. In the third chapter, from the 16th to the 18th verse, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were being tested because they were being tested of who were they going to, who they were going to worship. The decree was, if you are worshiping any other god other than the beast, you will be thrown in the furnace. These brothers, they said to the king, sir, I'm paraphrasing it, and I encourage you to read it for yourself. We are not careful in our answer, our response, because we know that our god will deliver us from this fiery furnace. And if he, even if he don't, we know that he's able to do so. They had confidence. They had confidence and assurance and within themselves, they were thankful to God because God was their deliverer. That's who God was to them, a deliverer, a way maker. We, when, even when it seemed like there was no way, they had confidence and they did not shake or stutter in their response to the king. My other brother, Daniel, he was challenged because he always prayed before the Lord three times a day on his knees and he was being challenged. And according to the decree, he had to be placed in the lion's den. But Daniel, without hesitation, with confidence and assurance, even when the odds was against him during this time, he said, King, I'm not worried about it. Put me in, I'm paraphrasing it, but read the word of God for truth to be accurate. But he was placed in the lion's den. What I liked about this was the king prophesied to Daniel, Daniel and said, hey, you will be delivered out of the lion's den. And according to Daniel's relationship with God, <laughs> Daniel was delivered from the lion's den. Okay, let me give you the third one. Three strikes and you are out. In the book of Acts, 
Paul and Silas, when you, if you have the time, read Acts 16, read the whole chapter, but in Acts 16, 25, and it says, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. They did not care who heard them, but Paul and Silas, even though they were bound, even though they were shackled in the midst of the prison, they began to sing songs with joyfulness. They sung they prayed to God with the spirit of thanksgiving to God. When your midnight appears, when there is midnight in your life, when there's midnight in our life, when there's midnight in this world that we live in, let's give God praise. Let's give God thanksgiving. Let's exalt God for who he is because he is worthy to be praised. And as he did with Daniel and as he did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and as he did with Paul and Silas, and as he did and is doing with us, God will deliver us because the pattern is give him thankful. In Philippians 4 and 6, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication or request with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Why our, our requests should not be just to ourselves or to uh, our boss or to our bank account or to our neighbor or to our rich uncle. No, it should be the, to the God, the creator of the heavens and earth. Our request should be to the God, the one that causes our heart to beat. Our request should be to God who gives us strength to live, to move, to have our being. Our request should be to the one who's able to deliver us out of any, any problem. And when we're giving him thanksgiving and when we're giving him praise, let's make sure that we have the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And Isaiah 61, 3, it talks about we should have the garment of praise. Trade that garment in. If you feel like you're down right now, if you feel like you're in a slump right now, I encourage you to give God some praise. I encourage you to praise the Lord. I remember yesterday I was at work and I was tired. Um, working 12 hours. I was really tired. I said, oh my God, I feel like going to sleep. But I thank God I had time to relax, sit and rest. While I was at work, there was nothing going on. I started telling God <laughs> how wonderful he is. And I started telling God how great he is and start telling God that he's wonderful. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted up. He's worthy to be magnified. And in the process of that time, within 15 minutes, that all that heaviness of sleep that was trying to bombard my mind, all of a sudden I felt, shh, I was ready to go. <laughs> I was invigorated. I was alive. I was energized because he, his spirit became a, a switch. I took off that garment of sleepiness. I took on a garment of life, praise, worship that rejuvenated me. There was another moment in my life when I was, I was really down. I was really down. Things were not going my way. I was depressed. I did not want to talk to God. I really didn't. Tell me to read the scripture or I didn't feel it. I'm just being honest. I'm being transparent. I didn't feel it. Didn't want to. But I love to sing. I love to sing. I love to worship God in singing. And I, I thank God that he gives me songs just to sing to him. And these are my personal songs that he gives me. He just dropped in my spirit. But he said, sing me a song. I said, okay, God, for what's the use? And so I sung it. Reluctantly, I sung it. And God has a sense of humor, I believe. But he said, sing another song. I sung it. Okay, God, I said that. So what? Reluctantly. And I'm being honest. That's how this, these are my response to God. And so he said, okay, sing me another song. I sung it again. Okay, God, now I sung three songs. Okay, I, I was in my mind, I said, okay, I, think, I thought by then that you would have me feeling happy, you know, like I would desire. No, nothing happened. It didn't happen. <laughs> he told me another, said, hey, sing me another song. I said, okay. And a little bit of me was kind of like, okay, again, you know, I sung that next song. So I've been sung four songs. Then he said, sing another song. I sung that last fifth song by his grace. His joy just ushered in. His peace ushered in. Strength ushered in. I was thankful. I was thankful. I was thankful. There is 
power when we worship God in spirit and in truth. There is power when we thank God with a grateful heart. There is power when we acknowledge God with gratefulness in our heart because he's worthy to receive all the glory, all the praise. He is my shield, my strength, my joy, my love, my father. I belong to him. I bless his name. I glorify his name. In him I live. I thank God. And I agree with song, I mean, Isaiah 61 and 10, it says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God because he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. Salvation, not just at the death, burial, and resurrection, because yes, Christ Jesus, he is my Savior, my Lord. I accepted him in my life, filled with the Holy Ghost. And I thank him for that, but I thank him for the other areas of salvation that he has brought upon my life. When I needed salvation from myself, from my stinking thinking, from my way of acting, he brought me delivery. He brought me salvation. When I needed salvation in my way, I was thinking when I had no direction, when I was ignorant and sometimes have to get reinstructed again. He is my salvation. He is my deliverer. He is my keeper. He is my rest. I call upon him with joy and gladness. And my friends, who is he to you? One thing I, we know, that he's our advocate. He's the almighty God. He is the alpha and the omega. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the bishop of our souls. That's who he is. He's the bread of life. And I'm talking about Jesus, who is the chief shepherd, our comforter. I'm talking about Christ Jesus, the chief cornerstone, our deliverer. And he is God with us, Emmanuel, the everlasting father. He is faithful. And he's the true witness. He's the foundation of why we believe what we believe in, because he is the friend of sinners. Yes, he is the gift of God given to mankind that mankind might be redeemed back to God. And he's that good shepherd. He's the one to lead us and guide us. And he is our high priest. He's king of kings. He's Lord of lords. He became the lamb, the lamb, the lamb of God, the only sacrifice given to man. No more sacrifices of bulls and goats as they did in the Old Testament, but Christ Jesus, the only lamb, laid down his life one time went up to glory, risen up in glory, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's our intercessor, making intercession for men that we might have life because he is life and he is the light of this world and he is the prince of peace. He's our prop propitiation, that's in First John, the taking away of our sins. And he has he is the only ransom for man. And so and I thank God that he is the root of David. And just like Bart, blind Bartimaeus, who had confidence in the reputation of God, he says, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. God is a merciful father, and he's our teacher. He's truth. He's our savior. He is the way. He's wonderful. He's God. He is the word of God. And my friends, my brothers, my sister, he keeps us. He's our keeper. He's our protection. He is our shield. No one can break through him. He's our shield. He's our rest for the weary soul. That's who he is. So all these things that are who he is, we can give thanks to God. We can give praise to God. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to give him thanks. And we can look over our lives. All that taking place this year, all that taking place last year, all that has taken place 10 years ago or five years ago, or even one minute, we can look over our lives and give him thanks because of the ways that he's allowing us to overcome many obstacles in our lives. He's delivered us. He has set us free. He has saved us. He's always our present help. He instructs us. He keeps us. He watches over us. He has kept us from things that we try to do within ourselves, but he kept us from doing those things that he knew and we know that we should not have done. He is a keeper. He inspires us. He renews us. He opens up doors for us. I'm talking about Jesus. He provides for us, and we owe him a thank you. With joyfulness, we can give him a thankfulness. With gladness in our heart, we can give him praise. With gladness in our heart, we can magnify him. We can glorify him. Oh, just magnify the Lord. Uh, if you need healing, magnify his healing ability. If you need rest, magnify his restful ability. When things come up to you that try to 
turn your mind towards in another direction. Just magnify who God is. Magnify that you can stand on the rock of his word and all aspects of him. He's a rock in healing. He's a rock in deliverance. He's a rock in being inspirational to us. He's a rock of being the light to us. He's a rock of being our rest. He's a rock of being the one that renews our soul. He's the rock that causes us to walk in his way. He is the rock that we can depend on because he's a God and beside him there is no other. Let's give God thanks with a grateful heart because he's worthy to be praised. And as we give God thanks, as we give God praise, God comes in to fellowship with us. God wants to fellowship with us in spirit and in truth. God wants to walk with us from day to day to day. While we're walking through the valleys and the shadows of life, God wants to have that continuous walk, continuous fellowship with them at all times. Mm. At all times, with all kinds of prayers. Mm. Ephesians 6 as 18 says, keep on praying. <laughs> keep on praying with thanksgiving. Keep on giving him gratefulness in our heart. And we thank and praise God for the word that has come forth today. I pray that there was something said to encourage you, to inspire you, to draw you close to Christ Jesus. We thank God for the many speakers that come across, but let's listen to the spirit of these speakers that will point us to Christ Jesus, that God will be glorified in our lives. Pastor Eric. Amen, amen, amen. Give him thanks. Who is he to you? Who is God to you? Activate who he is mm -hmm. to you. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Can we give thanks when things are gloom? Can we give thanks? This is the power, or this is power when we worship God, when we worship God in spirit and in truth. God is good. He is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I was sitting there and I was listening to that message. And I remember um, this particular day I was driving um, if you're not familiar with the D.C. area, um, I was on 295 and I was going through a bad marriage. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. I was uh, in a situation where I didn't know which way to turn. I didn't know which way to go. All I knew was to give God some praise. And I was driving on 295 and I was going about 60 miles an hour. And I had to just open up my, I rolled down the window and I just yelled out, Jesus. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, you know, who to call that day, but I just knew to call on the name of Jesus. Right. And I just said, Jesus, Jesus, I need you, Lord. And I just began to give God some praise. And as I began to give God some praise, like Minister Richard said, Elder Richard said, the, the, the spirit of heaviness just lifted up off me. And I felt the spirit of peace just come upon me. And I was able to get to my destination and the rest is history. Um, but can you worship or can you give God praise when all hell is breaking through in your life? Mm -hmm. Can you give God praise in the midst of the fire? Yes. Can you give God praise when things don't seem um, to be going your way? Can you give God praise? Can you give God praise when things seem like it's on top of you? Can you give God praise when it seems like things are going on in the inside of your body? Can you give God praise? Can you give God praise when the doctor give you a, a bad doctor's report? Can you give him praise? Can you give him praise when the doctor's report 
turns out good. Can you give God praise? Yes. And see, we, we, we give God praise when things are wonderful, when things are awesome. We, it, it's easy to give God praise. But can you give God praise when things are not going well for you? Yes. Can you give God praise? Can you give God praise when that doctor says that, oh, ma'am, sir, you are diagnosed with this condition? Can you give God praise when that landlord knocks on your door and says, hey, we give you 30 days mm -hmm. to to pack up your things and get up out of here. Can you give God praise Hallelujah. when 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 you get a call in the middle of the night when your son or your daughter has been arrested by the police? Can you give God praise mm -hmm. when 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 you hear that a loved one was diagnosed with COVID? Can you give God praise? Can you give God praise when when it seems as things are going contrary? Can you give God praise when when it seems like all hell is breaking through? everywhere everywhere i turn it seems as though the things are going on can you give god praise can you give him praise can you praise him in the midst of the fire just like meshach shadrach and abednego can you can you give god praise see most of the time when we desire to give god praise or god desires for us to give him praise or god desires us to praise him can you praise him when you're walking through a storm in life? Can you mm -hmm. praise him? Can you praise him when, when, when it just seems like, man, when I look at my finances and the bank accounts don't line up to the bills that I have, can, can you give him? I remember days when, when, when I received a, a letter in the mail, when, when the IRS wanted to garnish my wages and they took my whole check and I had child support and bills that were due. Can you give God praise in the midst of, of those situations? Can you still give him a worthy praise? Thank you, Lord. Can you give him praise? God is so good. Can you give him thanks? Can you thank him in the, I see so many people are, are complaining that they can't go out. They can't uh, do certain things. I, I see people complaining that they can't go in, to the mall and they can't go Christmas shopping and they can't go shopping for Thanksgiving and they can't sit around with their family members. But I wonder what happens when all those two, what, all those thousands and thousands of people that have lost their life this year due to COVID. I wonder, have they had the same thoughts? Mm -hmm. Would they may have changed their, their plans around a little bit? Can, can you th give God thanks? Can you give him praise? Can you give him worship in the midst of your trials and your tribulations? God is good. Amen. He's good. Who is he to you? Is he your deliverer? Is he your healer? Is he your way maker? Your miracle worker? Your promise keeper? Who is he to you? Your Jehovah Jireh, your Jehovah Tiskanu, mm -hmm. your Jehovah Rapha, your Jehovah Banner. Yes, Who is sir. he to you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is an altar call. This is an altar call. Uh, this is an altar call. I, I want you wherever you are to lift up your hands Hallelujah. in surrender. Thank you for that. And I want you to surrender whatever that thing is that you're wrestling with, the thing that you're, you're, you're struggling with. I want you to surrender. Thank you. I surrender all. Yes. All to Jesus. I surrender, God. I surrender all. I surrender my heart. I surrender my will. I surrender my emotions, my intellect. I surrender my hands. I surrender my feet. Sometimes I don't know how to talk to people. I surrender my mouth. I, sometimes I, I can't, I have a hard time hearing what others has to say. I surrender my ears. I, I surrender out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth speak. I surrender my heart. I surrender it all to Jesus.
is, is that you lift those hands, lift those hands, lift those hands, wherever you are, lift those hands, lift those hands and worship and begin to open up your mouth and worship him. Give him praise. He is your praise and his praise shall continuously to be in our mouths. Our souls will make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Come on, don't be looking at the screen. Come on, mute your TVs for a second. And give God a worthy praise, for he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you. We bless you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We give you praise. For you are our praise. And your praise shall continuously to be in our mouths. Our souls will make its boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you this afternoon for Elder Richard Payton. Father, we thank you for the word that, that came, you, that you uh, used him to bless us with today. Father, we receive your word. And we thank you for him. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his examples. We thank you for the word that, that, that came out of his mouth. God, we thank you today. We pray for him today, Lord God. We pray that you would just continue to bless him. That you would just continue.